The Bible says that there was a man, go back there to Acts chapter 9, and his name was Saul. And it says Saul was breathing out threatenings and slaughter. Or another one said murder. Saul was murdering people. Saul of Tarsus was even at this uh, by Stephen where they put down their clothes. When they killed Stephen, Saul was of Tarsus was there. Saul of Tarsus wasted the church. He killed people. Stalin killed people for a joke. He just killed people. He just enjoyed killing people. There were some people, if you're in North Korea today, you can't just leave like that. You hear me? In North Korea, you can't leave. You, you'll be lucky if you leave. Then even the leader of North Korea had somebody leave, and when they had somebody go and track down the man and kill him and make it look like it was the country in which he was killed that did the dirty work. Saul of Tarsus. Anybody know him? Anybody know Saul of Tarsus? Anybody know Paul? Anybody know Paul? Talk to me. Anyone has ever heard of Paul? Anyone has ever heard of Saul of Tarsus? Well, Saul of Tarsus became Paul. But Saul of Tarsus was a learned man. He learned at the feet of Gamaliel. Saul of Tarsus believed then that as a Jew, then he's going to, all those people who are talking about Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that they're wrong and he's right. He was like many of the rabbis during the time that met Jesus, who, when Jesus did anything on the Sabbath day, they were always ready to jump into his throat and say, this should not happen on the Sabbath day. You hear me? He had a reputation. He had a very bad reputation. He had a reputation of killing people. Saul of Tarsus. Verse number two. He says, he went unto the priest. He got permission. What was the permission? Because he got the letters from the highest council so that he can go to Damascus. Damascus, you can tell how desperate someone is when they want to carry something out. Damascus was 160 miles northeast of Jerusalem. There were no cars in those days. There were no scooters. So you'll have to take, you'll have to walk or use a donkey. 160 miles away. And Saul's idea was this, that in Jerusalem, the church was being persecuted, and as a result of being persecuted, many persons left Jerusalem, and they went to Damascus, which is the capital of Syria, to avoid the persecution. When there is persecution in the early church, people left, people were scattered, and the word of God spread. In Syria, in Damascus, Paul says, I am in Jerusalem, and I want permission to go to Jerusalem, uh, to go to Damascus, and pick up people who call themselves Christians and bring them back so that I can persecute them. You hear me? When you're overseas, or if you're here and you left and you run overseas and they want you here for a crime, what did they do for you? They seek extradition. You can't just go into people's country like that. Yeah, you seek, to, you seek extradition. So that they can do what? Send you back. Paul is not saying, I want somebody to go and pick out. He says, give me permission so I can go. So I can bring them back. And I can bring them back and teach them a lesson. And desired of himself letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, because Jews were still associated with the synagogue as Christians, that he found any on the way, the way, you'll find the way. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So Jesus is the way. If he found any of 
this way, or anybody who believed in Jesus, whether they were men or women, he wanted a letter so that he can bind them and bring them back. So he could do what with them? Witness to them? No. Persecute them. Saul suddenly found himself, put it up there, on the ground. He was going to do something else. But Saul yet, verse 4, and he fell to the earth. He found himself on the ground. Did he plan to be on the ground? No. You know what it was? A personal meeting with Jesus. Isn't it interesting how Jesus arranged meetings? That you've got one plan somewhere, sometime, you're traveling, and at midday he set up a meeting for you? What he got? A bright light experience. You ever had a bright light experience? He had a bright light experience. Saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Now, if you look back, St. Paul will believe that he was doing the work of God. Hitler thought he was doing the work of God. He says, find a solution. He says, the Jews are the problem. So he killed six million of them. There were people who had us enslaved and they thought they were doing the work of God. Yeah. But the Bible says that when he got that encounter, if you hear me now, when he got the encounter, when you can meet Jesus and be the same, you cannot meet Jesus and be the same. We sing it, I will never be the same again. No, no. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is not the same. He is a new creature. You can't meet Jesus and be the same. Yes, Paul, you're going, Saul is going to persecute and kill who he can kill. He bind and bring back if he resists. He kill you. And suddenly, at midday, there was a light. You listening to me? Mm-hmm. But he was no near light. He had a voice coming from him. He fell to the earth. Turn to Acts chapter 22, verse 6. Because St. Paul speaks about it. Acts 22. So he got a light. He got a light. And it came to pass, as I made my journey, and was come nigh unto Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me. And I fell onto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? St. Paul, Saul was traveling with other men. He, were, he fell to the ground. He saw the light because it was for him it was directed. And he answered, and I answered and said, who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw the light and were afraid. But they did not hear the... Ah, because the call was not for them. Samuel, when he was young, you remember the story of Samuel and Eli. And Samuel ran over by Eli and said, Here am I. And he said, What are you talking about? You called me. He said, No, I didn't call you. Go back home. Come back another time. And then, Why? Um, why I, uh, but you called me. That's why I'm here. No, go back home. He says, The next time you're here, that call says, Here am I. And the call came for him. This call. Only an individual got the call because God wanted St. Paul to do his work. The men were with him. They saw the light. 
but the men did not hear the call. They saw him fall to the ground, but they did not they saw the light, but they did not hear the call. God called him for something specific. Why are you persecuting me? Go back to chapter 9. For me, please. Thank you. He says, and he said, verse 6, verse 6, thank you. And he trembling, Saul trembling, astonished, said, Lord, what will thou have me do? Every Christian need to ask that question. Every Christian. You're part of the family of God. God, what will you have me do? You hear me? Every Christian must ask the question, God, how do I fit into this place? What is my responsibilities? What are my roles? What will thou have me to do? And you know what it tells us? God can call anybody. God can use whoever he wants to accomplish his goal. It has nothing at all to do with your ability. It has something to do with your availability. Are you available? And he trembling, he was astonished. Verse number seven. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but they did not see a man, because it was not for them. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus, the same Damascus that he was going with all of his sight to bind people. Somebody had to lead him into Damascus. Sometimes, and some of us, with all of our abilities that we have now, we say we can't do anything. Think about that. When we're gonna, when we are gonna do something for the Lord, when we get older, when we can't do anything. Come on, talk to me. When are you gonna do something? Yes. The same man. You see how God has taken the energy and turned it for him. Look at that. He takes the energy. He is going to Damascus. He is capable. He's got all of his faculties. He's got it going on. He's going to Damascus to persecute people. And he makes it to Damascus. But not in the way that he had envisioned. He's now going to be a witness for God instead of persecuting people. 